You are never far from the sea in Norfolk. It plays such an integral part in the life of this county. There have been many influential maritime figures who have helped shape this country's maritime history. Of course there are people like Nelson, Sir Cloudley Shovel, Christopher Mings, people who have had a lasting impact on this nation's maritime history. But more recently, in the early years of the 20th century, were two great sea lords, both with strong Norfolk connections, who helped prepare the Royal Navy for the challenges of modern warfare. In the latter years of the 19th century, Britain was not best prepared for the naval challenges that lay ahead. The naval fleet was ageing, it was still sail powered with wooden ships, yet its main opponent, Germany, was already gearing up to a new generation of warfare. It fell to two Norfolk sea lords to transform that position and ensure that the British Royal Navy adapted and evolved to meet the challenges that were lay ahead in two global conflicts in the 20th century. Their names were Lord Jackie Fisher of Kilverston and Sir Arthur Nivett Wilson who came from Swaffham. They succeeded one another as sea lords. Lord Fisher, who was born in Ceylon, now Sri Lanka, in January 1841, joined the Royal Navy as a 13-year-old. His first ship actually was HMS Victory. Over the years that followed, he saw action in the China Wars, and he also studied naval gunnery, and also returned as an instructor and head of torpedo and mine training at HMS Excellence. Fisher was well aware of the inadequacies of the Royal Navy. He wanted to take it from an age of sail-powered wooden ships to oil-powered iron ships. His greatest contribution was in the introduction of the dreadnought fleets. With expertise gathered over a number of years, he was able to foresee what the demands of modern warfare would be. He knew that all big gun ships, vessels such as the feared dreadnought, were the future of naval warfare. Brought in by the Admiralty as first sea lord, his task was to make the navy more efficient but more cost effective and also prepare it for modern warfare. Fisher loathed war. He was hoping that his great big vessels with all their mighty guns would be a deterrent rather than a feared weapon. As it turned out he was wrong on that score and the dreadnoughts formed the basis of modern warfare at sea during the early years of the 20th century. When Fisher retired he was succeeded by another Norfolk sea lord Sir Arthur Nivett Wilson from Swaffham. Nivett Wilson was actually a VC although oddly enough rather than winning his Victoria Cross on the oceans of the world he won it in the deserts of Sudan when he suddenly found himself caught up in a melee and surrounded by local African warriors with swords and spears. He fought them off single-handedly before a unit came to his rescue but by that time his feats had already gained legendary status. Word was spreading around the unit. Not long after Nivett Wilson was invested with his Victoria Cross and his rise up the ranks of the Admiralty followed soon after. He was a quite different character to Lord Fisher Fisher was confrontational, unpopular, not frightened to make decisions that made him enemies, whereas Wilson was more conciliatory in his approach. He was actually a reluctant sea lord, and much of his transforming work in making the navy a more modern force was carried out before he actually became the first sea lord. He only served for less than two years before resigning the position early. One of the remarkable new weapons that Wilson wanted to introduce was the torpedo. He was promoted Rear Admiral in 1895 to carry out secret torpedo-related manoeuvres from HMS Hermione. He later became Lord Commissioner of the Admiralty and Comptroller of the Navy in 1897 before being knighted in 1902. He was also in command of the Home Fleets and a major figure in the development of the Royal Navy and in particular with that torpedo weaponry. However, unlike Fisher, he was not an advocate of submarine warfare. He famously described the submarine as a damned un-English weapon. The odd thing about Lord Jackie Fisher is that he served as First Sea Lord on two occasions. 
Churchill persuaded him out of retirement to help during the war effort as the First World War broke out. However, Fisher and Churchill clashed. Fisher resigned his position, mainly over the Gallipoli campaign, and served out the rest of the war in an advisory role. When he was created Baron Fisher of Kilveston in 1909, Jackie Fisher took the motto Fear God and Dread Nought over the mighty battleships that he actually introduced. After serving out the remainder of the First World War in an advisory role, Fisher took a low-key approach and eventually died in 1920. He's buried in the churchyard at Kilverston near Thetford. When Sir Arthur Nivett Wilson retired, he received the title the third baronet of Delhi. The regard in which Nivett Wilson was held can be demonstrated by the fact that his coffin was carried by four admirals and a vice admiral to burial in the churchyard of St Peter and St Paul's at Swaffham. A bronze memorial plaque was unveiled in the church at Swaffham in his honour by Admiral Sir Edward Bradford.